Hey guys, I'm Mr. Jimmy Side, and this is episode 5 of the Advanced Driving School. And in this episode, we'll talk about pretty much things iRacing doesn't tell you, and if they did, it's deep within the forum, so instead of having to search for it, I guess I'll just explain some of the stuff right here. Now, what this includes would be some stuff like the app INI tweaking, you know, stuff like that, um, seat position, you know, HUD, heads up display position, pretty much stuff like that. Seat position, I don't know if I said that already, but yeah, we're just going to cover little things like that. Let me make sure. I don't know. Let me look. Oh, all right. The other one was cameras is what we're going to be taking a look at how to adjust all this and do all this. So I guess the first thing I'll start is with the app I and I tweaks, which is used. You know, you could use it to, uh, I think that's how you turn on and off the built in recording software. I'm not sure. It's also how you set up some screen settings, full screen settings, you know, stuff I'll explain when I get to it. So go to your file explorer, which usually is this little folder down here, most of the time on Windows, and go to documents, go to iRacing, and you'll see one here that says app. You can see it highlighted. So let's just go ahead and double click on that. Don't worry, I'll zoom this stuff in if I have to. Now you actually maximize this, and you see all this confusing crap. But this is pretty much all stuff that's adjustable. I don't mess with any of this. I'm just going to tell you some things that I did mess with, which will more than likely be in the graphics department. So you can see here, it says graphics, right? And you can see border. What that does is, if you're in windowed mode, you'll get the border that has this X square and... Yeah, the close, maximize, and minimize. If you something like if you put that to zero, it'll keep the border off, so it'll just give you the regular windowed mode. It'll still be considered windowed. I'll explain this later. Well, I'll, I'll show it later in the sim. Full screen, you can see here. Now I'm just going through basic key points here that they may or may not tell you, but all this is pretty much self-explanatory. So full screen, you can see here equals one, and that means I am in full screen mode when I enter the sim. And pretty much all this does it on its own when you're in the same graphic configuration. But you can tweak other stuff while you're in here. Like, let me look for a important one here. Oh, it says reduce frame rate when focus lost. So again, if you're a streamer, this is very important. If you have it set to zero, it'll keep, let's say, you're making 70 frames per second. And you click off the main screen, I guess, if you're running one monitor. You click off of it and get out of the windowed mode. Or if you're in windowed mode, when you click to the side, most of the time it drastically drops your FPS to like 10 or something like that. So when you select it to zero, it'll make sure you maintain your frame rate. You know, it doesn't drop. And I said that's important for streamers. And if I can find something to do with sound, I really don't know where it would be. Because I haven't messed with it, messed with it in a long time. All right, here's another one too that I'll talk about. It says spooling enabled here under replay. Now that you can, there's a setting I'll show you again later when I get in the sim. But spooling enabled just pretty much allows you to keep saving your replay by starting to starts tapping into your regular memory. So not RAM, the thing hard drive space it starts using up to make sure you can record an entire replay, I guess, or something like that. I don't know. I don't mess with it. Whatever. All right, now. I'm, I just pretty much talked about all that crap. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Here's another important thing here. Under video. In the app I and I. You see video capture enable. I have my set to zero because I use uh two different programs anyway. So I don't need the one built in with iRacing. And if you set it to one. It'll actually enable you to be able to use it, you know. If you press the certain hot key to record, which, which is like four freaking keys, I forgot what it was, it'll start recording. And you have all these settings here. You can mess with it. It tells you what to enter. If you enter in, so zero automatically picks your video size and tells you all that. So I'm not going to get into that. Just go ahead and look it up. You can see it. It's all in everybody's app I and I. So member documents, high racing folder, app, I and I. 
And here's another thing. View. Now, this is something I recently doesn't tell you. I think someone else mentioned it in a forum again. You have to look really hard for it. But you can kind of get a... I wouldn't know how to see that. To where it simulates forces, like G-forces and all that crap, in a way, in your view. You know, so when you, like, turn left into a corner, it'll kind of... The screen will kind of tilt down into that corner. I could explain it, but I'm not gonna, because I don't really like messing with this. But I have minimal settings here. You'd have to play with these uh, settings to get your own look. So if you want to check that out, just go to View. And most of the time, the thing that I messed with was Driver Head Horizon. You can see I have mine at that setting. Driver Head No Pitch, that's another deal. Driver Head Wobble, you can get the little I said, moving effects. Then I leave alone. Driver rotate head is usually what you want to set. And here you can also set your virtual mirror field of view as well as your actual driving field of view. So that's pretty much it. All this stuff down here, all self-explanatory. You can see CPU meter, you can set, select a one so it monitors your CPU. It just adds another thing to the one bar I'll show you when we get in the sim. So now that I talked about that, we're going to just, you want to save the changes if you want. Go ahead and go into the sim. And I'll show you some more things. So I will be, I will be back. All right, here we are in the sim. And what was I talking about? Oh, CPU thing will show up on this little thing I'm circling here. So you can see I have LQSP. Well, if you enable the CPU deal, it'll show a C, I think, or some other bull crap. I don't really know. I don't mess with it because I have my own on my other screen here. But we're at Brand's Hatch, just doing a little random test, and well, I don't know what I was going to show you here, but whatever. Oh, might have been in options. Just pretty much showing you where you can enable some of those settings that I, like right here, full screen, you, you border, see all those settings, right, what I just talked about. And some of these will set that to it, so, yeah. Now the replay, replay spooling. You can see there's an enable, replay spooling, that's the same thing as enabling it in the eye and eye. So that's pretty much all there was to that. I'm not going to get into it. So let me jump in the car here. All right, you can see how bland this kind of looks. Well, because it's kind of gray, gray skies, but that's how it is on here. But just for this uh, particular demonstration, you see where it says N, which is for neutral. You know, in pit lane, the little steering wheel icon there, the brake pedal, collection gas, the 60 FPS deal relative. Well, you can move all that around. And how do you do that? I'm actually going to go to a windowed mode here real quick so I can show you thing using uh, an on-screen keyboard. All right, so you see, let me actually slide this. All right, you see what I got here, this keyboard? Well, what you do is, to move these elements around, just press Alt, and by default it should be K. And you can see it didn't do it there because I'm kind of clicking away from it, but that's what you press. I'm just going to show you that with that, so whatever. Let me just press it again, so Alt and K. And you can see they kind of highlighted blue. And my mouse shows up now on screen. Now all you do is just click it and drag it to wherever you want. Hey, I'm trying to get a good visualization where this is at because I don't want to ruin my settings here. But yeah, you can move it around. See, I'm just dragging it. Say you want your relative over here. No, I'm not going to mess with it, actually. I keep it there for a certain reason because I do a lot of oval stuff. So that's why this is over here. You can see you can move all these around individually. And I said I'm mostly oval racer, so... I have all, a lot of my important stuff to the left-hand side because that's where I'm used to looking. But that's it. That's all you do to move that shit around. And press Alt key again to disable that. And let me exit the car here. Because I'll talk about another thing. Now, what is that? Well, seat position I'm going to talk about. So how do you do that? Well, I'll show you here. You press Control and F12. Don't worry about this FN here. So control F and F12 brings up that. So let me move this out of the way again. And once you get into this little deal here, first thing I do when changing my seat position is what we're doing here. 
I put the static FOV to what my FOV is set in options. So under options, click that, and I set it to that. I don't know, it's just out of habit. It should automatically do it, but you see, you're looking at mostly the offset X, I guess the offset Y, the Z, as well as orient Y, and same with, I guess, position. That would be, you you want to mess with pretty much all five of these. The R is for rotation. I leave it alone. There's no really need for it, if you ask me. Same with most, I think it's this one. Let me see. Yeah, pretty much that. I try to leave that alone. But I'll try to explain what each of these does. All right, so offset X going up on the number moves you forward in the seat. So say I want to go up like five clicks. You can see the seat moving. Now this doesn't change the field of view at all. Not one bit. It just changes your seating position. And you can tell this by how it's not messing with your field of view. Is because of the look at the background. It's not changing. Look, just keep focus on that green cone. See how it's not changing, but your seat is? That's what seat position moving is. And you can also do this by uh you know, typing in numbers here. So say I want to move it two clicks up. It'll I'll put zero or yeah, zero dot zero two. Like that, and that'll move forward two clicks. So you can use uh, keys if you want. Put that back to zero. But yeah. So, so offset X going up on the number moves you forward, and going down on the number moves you back. Now offset Y, this will move you left or right. Now it's not turning your head left and right, it's just moving you left and right. So say you're like a dog and want to hang out the window. You can move all the way over here, but it looks weird. Or same thing with the other side, but I leave that at zero because it's just awkward to move it away from the center. The only car, I'll say this now, the only car I do use this to move it left to right is the Lotus 49. Because the wheel's off center because of the way you gotta sit in the car. So I just move it either side. So yeah. Anyways, Z over here, the offset Z, that moves you up and down. So going higher on the number, you go up. Lower on the number, you go down. Which I kind of actually like a lower seating position on this car in particular. Now, I guess we'll talk about Orient Y. Now, this one is like turning your head left or right. So, let's see if I want to look straight out my window. See, you can just do that. It's really awkward. So, I don't really know why you wouldn't want to mess with it, but whatever. Put it back to zero. And that's how you reset it. Put all the numbers back to zero when you want to reset them. Now, P is like your tilt. Like if you're, you're looking slightly down, so you, let's just say you're a real tall person and you want to kind of see your dashes. Like I say, you're real. You just click, click, click in that P and it'll move your neck down, I guess. Me, let me set this back to zero or two. Whatever. There we go. Set it back to zero. Let me go down my two clicks and yeah, I kind of want to see more of the wheel. So let's click. You click the positive part. To go to make you look down. So going up makes you look down. Going down makes you look up. Let's say about 2.6 here. Yeah, one more. See that? That's pretty much how you mess with it. See how I got it here? So you're just messing with pretty much the most important ones in most cars will be offset X, or EMP, and offset Z. And when you want to find the seating position you like, click save car. Save car. And click save. And when you press, when you enter your car, you'll have that new seating position. So let me exit that now. So that's pretty much all there is. Oh, well, no, no, no. I was going to say all there is to this video, but using the same controls, you know how I showed you control 12, F12, control F12, to bring up the screen again. Now this doesn't just go for your cockpit view. You can mess with like TV cameras, blimp cameras. Let's say TV one. See how I got that there? Now this thing, this gets more complicated because there's so many cameras around the track. It'll change every few seconds, I guess, depending on where you have it set to change to the next camera. But you can see, say you want to zoom it in. Say it looks too far away. You can use the zoom thing there to zoom in or to zoom out. You know, stuff like that. If you don't like it, just reload, click track, reload, open, change the camera. So go from TV2 back to 1, and it puts you back to how you were. So if you ever get stuck messing around, so say you do all this, and 
move it around. Yeah, I'll do. Oh no, I messed up. Look at that. There's Dale Jr. and what's his name? I did not know he was there in that particular spot. That's awesome. But yeah, anyways, I know he. I know these guys are on a, every track. I think there's a lot of Easter eggs with them, but I never knew where they were on this track. But yeah, so you don't want to keep that. Reload it, and it automatically put me back without me changing anything. So I mean to use this since a lot of the TV cameras are pretty, I guess, good. First thing I'll change is something like this. All right. So let me just go ahead and change all these values to zero. All right. Now that I did that, you're wondering why I reset everything to zero. Well, I'm going to turn that roll bar cam into a roof cam. So the first thing I'll do is have everything set to zero and I'll go up on the Z. Because what all this does, it makes sure you're dead center when you have everything at zero for this particular camera view. So I'm like, hey, look at that, like right here. Looks like a good camera view to me. This I'm gonna change the zoom. Okay, that don't work. Static FOV. There we go. Let's like bring that in a little. See what it kind of looks like. Again, for X you go forward, just like you were in the in car. Z is downward. If I uncheck is in cockpit, you can see, you can kind of see through the car there, right? That's because the in cockpit was checked, so if this still thinks it's an in car view, so uncheck that and it'll make it an exterior view. Now this messes with the sound, so you get an interior sound, or exterior sound instead of interior. So this P, I'm going to go down a little bit, and that's pretty much it. Oh, I'm actually going to save this little save car. Oh yes, save track to make sure it saves everything. I'm just not going to redo that, but you can mess with pretty much all the camera views. Now, you can't drive in a view like this. It's only strictly cockpit that you can drive in. So whatever you set will be what you drive in. I don't know, really know what else to say about this episode, except is it really important? Not really, but it's nice to know that you can mess with some of this stuff. There's more things out there to tweak, like getting two screens to work and that are two different sizes and, you know, two different resolutions. There's a thing how to do that. I'll find a link if I can, but if not, that's pretty much it. So yeah, next week should be, well, crap, let me look again. All right, so next week I'm going to talk about custom paints, which will look something like this, if I can find it, which will look something like this as a template, so I'll talk about how to do some of this, because I can't really go into detail about it. I'm not that skilled. But anyways, that's it for this episode. Remember, next week faints. Anyways, Sim Race and Chewy side.